People, time for a little more trade deadline talk, and we're going to finish up looking at the offense today. We're going to take a look at the interior of the offensive line, most specifically guard. You look at the Seahawks offensive line right now, and at the tackle spots, life is good. You've got two young guys on the first years of their rookie deal playing pretty good football. You've got guys that you have had for a year being held as backups, Stone Forsyth, Jay Curhan. At center, you're doing okay with Austin Blythe and Kyle Fuller. You are going to need to probably bring in at least one new center next year, but you don't have to worry about that right now. It's okay. I'm not crazy about Kyle Fuller, of course, but at least he's been here a while, and I guess he's alive, right? It's guard that we're trying to figure out here. Um, Damian Lewis, not playing great. He's doing some things well, some things not so well, but he, he's probably okay. You've got Gabe Jackson and Phil Haynes, and they're both struggling to stay healthy right now a little bit. I think Gabe Jackson is back, and I think Phil Haynes dodged the worst with a concussion. But once you get past those guys, the next man up is Jake Curhan, And we've all seen what happens when you put him at guard. It usually doesn't go well. It went pretty well in the preseason, but when it gets to actual NFL games... He has real problems, um, especially in pass protection. So maybe you want to add a little bit to your guard depth going into the um, middle part of the 2022 season. And if you want to do that, there are options. Now, some of them are going to cost you no picks because they're pulled out of free agency. There are some interesting names that are still out there waiting to get picked up. Um I'm going to pick out three in particular that caught my attention when I saw them here. I was actually a little surprised they were available, but you've got three guys. Eric Flowers, uh, last year he played over a thousand snaps with Washington and had a pretty solid year. Not sure why nobody's picking him up. Maybe he's got some kind of injury and nobody wanted to sign him during camp. If he's feeling better now, if whatever it is that kept him from making a team back in the uh, offseason has passed, then maybe you give Eric Flowers a look. Again, this would be a depth pickup. This would not be somebody you're bringing in to be a starter. So I think Eric Flowers would be fine. He's still relatively young. Alex Lewis, he was a guy who played hasn't played in two years, but last time he did play for the Jets in 2020. Respectable offensive lineman. Not bad for the vet minimum. And the third guy is Quentin Spain. This is a guy I remember talking about a couple years ago as a free agent option. He hasn't played yet this year, but last year he was a Bengal and was one of their best-graded offensive linemen, so that's another reasonable thought. But maybe none of that is doing it for you. Maybe you want to go a little bit better, or you want to get somebody a little more proven, or somebody who's actually played football this year at least a little bit. Maybe you're more about that. If so, there are still options. Let's take a look at some guys you could trade for. Dalton Risner is probably the big gun right now. This is a guy who starts for the Broncos. He's played almost 500 snaps this year, so he's he's the starter, period. Um, he's played okay, according to PFF, so far this year. Decent enough player. Uh, in 2021, he was graded a bit better, up near 68, uh, at 68 and a half, actually, playing most of the season. Um, former second-round pick, this guy is on the last year of his deal, and if the Broncos lose to the Jaguars, there's reason to believe they're going to put Risner on the pract um, trade block. Excuse me, trade block. If they do that, you're not going to have to give up a ton because this is a second-year rental. He's not a great player. Um, he, he doesn't have any kind of best guard in the league or one of the best guards in the league type notoriety. So if you trade for him, you're on the hook for his base salary of about 27 uh, Broncos save that much money by trading him about, I believe, if that's, I believe that's how it works. And then he's a free agent at the end of the year. He's only 27. He's played fairly well. He was a pretty high, high, high draft pick. So there were expectations of him coming into the NFL. And I think he's done an okay job living up, to, living up to it. So Dalton Risner is a guy you can trade for. You might have to give up a real asset. Like this guy might be a third round pick. But if you trade for him, not only is he going to maybe help you now, this is a guy who can help you later down the line because he becomes your long-term solution at the position. Now, Risner, 
with his size. I don't know if he projects to be more of a left guard or right guard in our offense. 312 is not that bad. That marks him as a potential left guard, but we do like our guards to be mobile in this offense in theory. So that might still be a little bit too much. Um, I don't know exactly how well he plays in space, but if you just want an all-around solid player who can actually usurp one of the starting jobs permanently, this is probably your guy. And after that, I'll admit, it doesn't look great. You've got John Miller, who spent 2021 with the Panthers and was meh, passable, tolerable, over 650 snaps. You go back to 2020, he was a little bit better, over 900 snaps. Super cheap, currently on the uh, Jaguars. One year, 1.1 million, basically. You could trade for him. They save a little bit of money. I mean, there, there's not much to it, right? Like, he's not he's not playing over there, so they'll give him up cheap. Yeah, that's not that fun. That's not that great. You got John Simpson. He's playing a little bit over there in uh, with the Raiders right now, but he is their backup. They do have a couple guys they start at in front of him at the guard positions. He's played passable guard football so far this year. Last year, he was a full-time starter and played... Um, well, he played. 2020... He, he played. Yeah, okay, we're, we're not doing great here, right? We, we're, uh, the car is coming to a crashing halt. And you would also take on Simpson's, um, the rest of his rookie deal, which is, again, very cheap. We're talking about 900000 this year and a million next year. The Raiders would actually have to eat a, de eat a decent amount of dead cap, so they may not be looking to do this because it doesn't save them that much money. But if they don't see a future with him, maybe they will. And this is a former fourth-round pick who is not that good of a player. So you're probably looking at a giveaway. You're probably looking at like a sixth-round pick at most. But still not that fun. About the most fun you can have past Dalton Risner would probably be Tri Turner. Uh, he's uh, currently with Washington. And so far in 2022, he's played... I mean, he's played 200 snaps... But they've got a couple guys at guard that start ahead of him. Tri-Turner's, tri uh, all things being equal, in Washington's offense, he's a backup. So if you take a look at the last time he was a full-time starter in 2021, he actually played well. Almost a grade of 70, over almost nearly 1,100 snaps. So Tri-Turner, that's probably about the most fun you're going to have this side of Dalton Risner. But you are probably going to give up a real asset here because the contract is is pretty soft, right? You're inheriting 1.1 million. Last year of his deal, next year he's a free agent turning 30. So you don't inherit any kind of long-term deal. You're just inheriting him for the rest of the year. Washington still pays most of his salary because the signing bonus was bigger than the base. So you might have to give up a live asset. You might have to give up like a fourth rounder. I don't think Washington gives him away. But if you wanted to maybe get somebody who could compete for the starting job with Gabe, with Haynes, maybe even Damian Lewis, this might be your best shot. And then you got Calvin Throckmorton, who um, I think he played. With a grade like this, maybe this is what they give you when you don't show up to the stadium for game day. I don't know. Um, yeah, when you get down to Calvin Throckmorton, you know it's time to just uh, stop. <laughs> You know you've gone too far. So, yeah, we're, we're not going to talk about that, but we are going to talk about some of these previous guys who are at least decent and would be quality depth behind what we already have at the guard spot. We got three guys right now. Two of them look like real injury concerns. Damian Lewis has gotten dinged up twice already this year, by the way. And if we start getting injuries at guard, it gets bad quickly. It's like... Jake Curhan bad, and I love Jake Curhan, but he's not a guard. He's not. And Stone Forsythe, before you guys say it, Stone Forsythe, there's no way he's a guard too. He's way too tall. The odds of him being able to play good at guard are slim to none. I don't even want to talk about that. So if you want to add to depth, I got no problem with making a little cheap signing for a guy like an Eric Flowers, Flowers or a Quentin Spain, just somebody who will be able to provide depth a little bit better than what you would get from Curhan and who's the practice squatter at guard we have is it Olivier Lestage you know somebody a little bit better than that 
I would also be amenable to a trade for somebody like a Dalton Risner to be a long-term part of our offensive line. Somebody who maybe you extend after the season and make him your long-term left guard. That would be nice. Get that problem out of the way without having to use a draft pick. Well, the draft pick you trade. Try Turner, not a bad idea either. He's played well in the past. Uh, he doesn't have an automatic starting role with Washington right now. So there's definitely something you can do here. So that's the, uh, that's the state of the trades you could make for a guard. If, uh, if you want to go somewhere else, I'm not really seeing a lot of good options, honestly. I, I kind of dragged the bottom of the barrel. Getting to Calvin Throckmorton is kind of evidence of that. But let me know what you like. What would you do? Would you do any of this? Would you Have you found another option that's better? Uh, just let me know what you guys think about all this. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. Go Hawks. And uh, the trade deadline is getting closer and closer. So we're going to keep churning out this content until there's no point to it. So see you guys soon. Go Hawks.